Hey Patrick. Okay, let me try and explain why the article will help you and why I'm suggesting to do that. So I've got Trotter Studio here. I've got your Excel file. Let me just pull that down here so we can take a look at it. So you've got this sort of thing where you've just got a bunch of XML that's of um, HTML, in fact, that's been dropped into these Excel cells. So you're right, the Excel file type will turn it into tags. But the fact they're tags means you can control them. So let me explain. I'll come back to Studio. So if I go to my file options to my Microsoft Excel file type, like this, and if I come down to the embedded content, I won't do anything yet. But if we just browse to your file, let's pick up your file. Okay, and I just preview it. In the preview, we're going to get this, which is what you're seeing at the moment, I guess. So you're seeing all of this, um, basically just big blocks of HTML, which is not helpful to you whatsoever. If I enable the embedded content, just tell it to extract in all the paragraphs, go with the default, and I preview it again. That will turn everything to tags, which is, I guess, is what you probably tried. Not very helpful because you've still got all these blobs of information here. It's just converted the tags. But you can see already that it's making a bit of a difference because all you can see now in the middle is pretty much the translatable text. So we can use this mechanism to control it in a different way. Now this expression is just taken as placeholders. So I'm going to remove that. And instead of using that, I'm going to add, just to show you, we can say, okay, let's take a tag pair. So we just looked for everything, just treated everything as the same type of tag. And so we, we put an, oops, an opening angle bracket. And then we say, don't give me a closing bracket, a closing bracket yet. Close the bracket, as many as possible. Let's make it lazy. Um, I think that's right. No, nope, sorry, what am I talking about? Until you get to that closing bracket, I think that's right. So I take that as the opening tag. This is the closing tag. Um, and I say, go to my advanced, and I say exclude. I say okay, and then preview it. You can see what it's done. So it's starting to have a bit of an effect. Now it's a bit different, and now we're splitting the text up. But it's still not exactly what you want because it's got some funny things in here, some funny behavior, which is probably related to the way the text is being structured. So it's not, and, and it seems to break things in odd places. So we want to try to um, try to fix that and do a better job of it. So we won't do a blanket, one rule fits all. Instead of that, let's take the rules individually. So if we go back to your Excel file. So we've got some paragraph tags in there. So let's, which is the P. So let's take the paragraph tag first. So we'll add a rule, tag pair, and we'll say make this a, oops, opening tag, closing tag. And in the advanced, paragraphs are normally structured, structural. So in the advanced, let's go to here and we'll say exclude them. Just preview that quickly. So that's going to pull this out and it's broken it up a bit more so we can see what's going on and you can see when it's like this it gives you a good idea of what you need to do next because you can have a look at it so if we were to take the span element next things that's the next one i can see here that sentence would work if i just made that external but if i make it external this one won't because here these tags are definitely internal it'll break that sentence and we don't want to break the sentence so we're kind of stuck with the spam with the spam one. So with the spam, what we'll do is we'll say, okay, add a new rule, make it a tag pair, and we go span. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Span. Oh, my typing. Span. Translatable. Advanced. And I'll say may exclude because it's smart enough to know that if it's internal, if the tags are internal, it shouldn't exclude them. I think they should work. So I click on OK there, OK there. If it doesn't work, I'll change it. Um, let's just preview that. OK, that looks pretty good. So you can see what it's done there. Um, the span has disappeared from some of those other segments. So it's moved them outside when it made sense and it's kept them inside when it didn't. So now we're getting better. Um, break tag. That seems to be from what I can see in this example you've given me, we don't need that break tag really. I'm gonna make that a, 
a placeholder. I'll just copy that out of there because it'd be quicker. So I'll add a rule here and I'll say placeholder, break tag. Let's exclude. Because from the look at that, I don't need it. Preview it again. Now it's getting even better. Let's take these little EM so it's bolded. So we can actually do that too. So we can come along and we can say add. This is the advantage of doing them separately is that you can specify how you want each one to look like. So EM, EM, translatable formatting will make this bold. In the advanced, um, let's say leave it at may exclude, then that way it'll, it'll leave them out if it makes sense, it'll include them if it doesn't. I'll say okay, preview it. It's now starting to look really neat. Um, well, we've got a strong one in there as well. Well, you get the idea. I'm not going to go through all of this. You get the general idea. So you can split it up and segment it as you see fit with formatting and anything else you need to do by working on the on the rules you've got in here. If you try and do it with the segmentation rules, I think you're going to have a real problem, especially because it's Excel and Excel pretty much forces the segmentation by cell. Um, and each one is considered to be a paragraph unit. So it's, it's a bit trickier to do that. It's also really difficult to use the um, segmentation rules to get this kind of, of um, granular segment segmentation. So this is what you need to do. It's a bit unfortunate that with this file type, it still hasn't been updated to do something smarter like allow you to use the HTML file type, the multilingual Excel file type, for example, in here, the embedded content, you can actually select the HTML file type and that would pretty much take care of it for you in one go. But we don't have that capability with um, uh, the Excel file type, I'm afraid, so you need to create your rules individually yourself. But it's pretty simple. I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. So hopefully this video is going to explain to you what you need to do and how to make this work.